Okay, welcome people to this uh, austere event, shall we say, forget the word austere, um, uh, banquet event. Yes. <laughs> this movable yeah. feast, which is traveling down Highway 6, which parallels I-80, and it's been going across Mother uh, um, Turtle Island, North America continent from Santa Monica. It's a peace walk. It's a well, peace it's the great march for climate action. It's, the it's, it's modeled on the peace walk mm -hmm. of 1986, and I, I understand you were part of that, John. Right. It's a great march for climate action. Climate action, and um, having been on the Great Peace March, um, it seems mm -hmm. like circles within circles within circles, mm -hmm. connecting Especially and interconnecting. Especially when I tell you some of the people who yeah. are on this march. So let's, let me introduce you yours. first. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So this is Mary. How do you do? And Mary, Mary D. Camp. D. Camp. Christine Ashley from Scattergood Friends School. In West and, Branch. In West Branch, and Iowa. They're Iowa. our hosts tonight. Our hosts yeah. tonight for this big event. Yeah. Um, Mary is um, a former uh, Green. No, I'm still Green Party. A former <clears throat> candidate under the Green Party ticket for mayor of Tucson, Arizona, in 2011. Mm. And um, before that, you were a homeowner. Yes, yes, I got caught up in the home foreclosure crisis, which really spurred me to uh, activism, full-time activism. Now. I tried to plug in and play by society's rules. I got a great education. I'm all but dissertation in two PhD programs. Mention <laughs> I, them. Oh, uh, George Washington University, political science. I was studying the influence political spouses have on the elected officials' decision making. And then studying how altruism is communicated in the communications department at the University of Arizona hmm. in Tucson. Hmm. Okay. So I, I really tried to plug in and do everything as society told me. When they pulled the rug out from under me and took my house, I and figured, well, <laughs> I've got to chart a new course. And that was uh, 2000? 2008 was when it started. And of Our point of similarity yes, yeah, was we it. had the same issue actually in the metro D.C. area, 2008. And uh, same thing, you know, hardworking. I, I'm an educator. My husband is a stonemason and a business owner. And 2008 hit, and um, obviously the business, uh, construction business and disposable income, even in Metro D.C., <laughs> flattened and um, that we found that the bureaucracies and the entities who we thought were there to provide us services only had obstacles and challenges and just by the skin of our teeth through using outside resources could we save our homes so I really um, understand what you were saying too. That, and you, um, mm -hmm. you're an educator? Right, I'm the head of school in charge of advancement and development at Scattergood Friends School. Um, it's a Quaker institution in West Branch, Iowa. We're celebrating our 125th anniversary. So, so there's a lot of things about Scattergood that resonate with the Great Climate March, and including several members of our community. Uh, Irving Treadway, if he's out there, he's cooking right now for y'all. Uh, he was on the Great Peace March. My co-teacher, Peter Meganson, was on the uh, Peace March. And Janet Kessler, we were just saying. So we've just been batting f all of these names and stories and finding that the three of us who haven't met before an hour ago are coming to this kind of critical juncture of conversation. I think that's what I really am so excited to talk about. Right. I think it's all of those human connections mm -hmm. that are going to make the difference that will forge solutions for the increasing challenges that the climate's tossing at us. Um, so you mentioned this mm -hmm. critical point, so we'll weave that hopefully into just a little bit more background in um, now you moved out of your home, now you're homeless or something, I'm not sure. I'm home free. You're home free, so yeah, go with nice. that and move to the, go. Yes, well, um, I belong to a number of activist groups in Tucson, the Green Party, the Tucson Peace Center, um, Occupy Tucson, Women's International League for Peace and Freedom. Mm. Well, at all of these groups that I would be attending the meetings, this fella kept appearing to recruit for the Great, Great March Climate for March. Climate Action. Mm -hmm. and, and the first time I saw him, I thought, well, I'm glad people are doing that. That's a great idea. Mm. And then the second time I thought, well, maybe 
sounds interesting. Maybe, maybe I could mm. do that. And, and the third time, it's I'm on board. I'm <laughs> doing that. <laughs> so I packed up my dog. I gave my car to our local public access radio oh, wow. station. Nice. <laughs> they were doing Boom. a fundraiser. Yeah. Hello, Tucson public access. <laughs> <laughs> and they're under threat, boy. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. They're, they're um, cutting back on their funding, right. their services, their space. Mm. And right. I, I packed it in and joined the Great March for Climate Action because it's a step that I could take. It was something that I felt called to do because we are at a critical mm -hmm. point mm -hmm. and we need more attention focused on what's happening. Well, it's interesting, too, because now um, this is not just a radical fringe conversation. So it's, yes. it's exciting to think that uh, this is now mainstream conversation. That did not come out of nowhere. This is um, this conversation has yeah. been building from uh, the Occupy movement. We were Absolutely. just talking about. We were talking about the Great Peace March, and Mary actually, in her work with the Occupy Tucson, I think is really important too because a lot of people are thinking. Uh, still now, like, well, so what did Occupy accomplish? Well, it, it brought out this idea into the mainstream, this 99% and the 1%. Like, that's now mainstream conversation. Well, in questioning corporate power, because Questioning who is in charge of our lives right now and our, how, how we're deluded into thinking that actually we are in charge. And that's yeah. why public access is so important, mm -hmm. because you do get an alternative voice that speaks up for the unaffiliated, for the common people. Mm -hmm. And when you're aligned against such massive resources that the corporations bring to the table, it's very mm -hmm. difficult to get the message out there that this is mm -hmm. our planet, mm -hmm. it is our future, and we've got to get involved if we want to have a different uh, trajectory, a, a challenge to the paradigm. That mm -hmm. Well, and that's right. a really important part of community access television is that it, it's grassroots and mm. it's it's free yes. speech literally, mm. and and uh, um, they these different points of convergence come together. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and you mentioned mm -hmm. Occupy, so you were there, and um, then you camped there, and then I don't know, probably got arrested. I don't know if you did. Forty-one different times, got Jesus. sent to jail Talk about three that. nights. All right. Um, <laughs> Yes. Well, that that's where I also developed stronger ties with our mutual friend, Libby Hubbard. Right. Um, and she had me on her public mm. access program in Tucson. Doctress in Utopia. Love Illusion. Mm. Love yeah. Illusion. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and she's a marvelous uh, worker on the peace and social justice front. But we just keep doing and what we can do. And you ran for mayor from I ran Occupy. For mayor mm -hmm. from an Occupy Tucson tent in public space. Yeah. But I ran against a fellow named Rothschild, so oh. my chances were pretty <laughs> low. But it was something that I could individually mm -hmm. offer the community. Mm -hmm. And if we would all take advantage of those individual opportunities, we could have a different planet. I think that was the place where I have been uh, uh, struggling, um, especially as a, um, a head of an educational institution where young people are coming now into high school, preparing for a future. And the future that can be presented to them is very uh, scary and negative. And, and the question that I have is how do I personally find uh, a platform of hope and optimism, and how does that get communicated into real action and possibility and something that can be communicated to the next generation? Because personally, I can't live in this depressed state of hopelessness. Oh, it doesn't have to be a hopeless <laughs> state at it all. Doesn't. Um, it doesn't. People think that the climate march is um, difficult, and, and at times it can mm. be when we're slogging through rough weather, it, it can be kind of daunting. But the sense of community that we have, mm -hmm. we, we have our own rolling village, the one world village. We've elected a mayor, we have a city council, mm -hmm. we have a judicial panel, mm -hmm. and we are role modeling mm -hmm. a right. radically different mm -hmm. way of living in mm -hmm. community. Mm -hmm. And I think that it's gonna be very beneficial because we're going to see more climate refugees
mm -hmm. as we go along. And the skills that mm -hmm. Scatter Good mm -hmm. Spren School teaches are critical. <laughs> it's a mouthful. It's critical yeah. for, for developing citizens that can yeah. lead the way. Well, this is different. Isn't, this isn't lifestyles. new, right? Like the ideas of community, these are centuries old, and there's something about our world today that looks to maybe uh, fracture or tear apart this notion of community. And what I think is really exciting is that there are groups with different interests who are looking at this idea. What is community? What is the power in that notion? And how do we actually implement it in this mm -hmm. day, this era? And I think um, what you guys are doing right now is you've got a microcosm mm -hmm. and it's an, ex like an intentional living community. I know our community, it's, it's a boarding school. We've been around for almost 125 years. What we do today is not very, uh, it, it is very much like what we were doing in 1890, mm -hmm. which is the idea of, of a, uh, consensus, uh, committees, uh, people bringing together the ideas, the acknowledgement that we're better as a group as opposed to an individual. Well, and you know? it, it runs right in the face of this disposable society that mm -hmm. we've been fed recently that people can be treated like tissues where right. you use them and you throw them away. Right. That's not the human condition. And all of the religions mm -hmm. talk about mm -hmm. interdependence, doing for one's neighbor, um, being the best that you can be personally. Everything old is new again. Mm -hmm. uh, you talked about, um, you know, the consumers. So all we, you know, the role that we play in this dominant paradigm here, call it what you will, uh, is nothing more than a consumer for commodities. Uh, we don't ever participate in the production and, 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 and the interaction mm. of growing and so forth. So we're, we're disempowered on a lot of levels. We're just sitting on the sidelines watching the corporations manufacture st stuff so we go down the store and freaking consume it and then throw it away. And it's so mm -hmm. despiritualizing. Well, and, in it, the, and, it, and really, it's we're disconnected. So the mm -hmm. cool thing, like we've got kids who are coming from all over the world, and so the idea, we have an eight-acre certified organic farm. Kids go out; they actually will study the soil. They will plant for their food items, which they will learn to cook and then eat and think about how am I feeling health-wise. Um, so there's this cycle of learning right now, which is going on, but more than. Um, abstract learning its experience so how do we connect people to that experience that's a big question which which urban areas are starting to do more and more through community gardening for instance well and what a valuable service too when you think right. about the threat to our infrastructure what if there is a ca catastrophic climate event that takes down the railroad or takes down the highways and we can't bust the food in. Those transportation sure. mm -hmm. miles are disrupted. Mm -hmm. Having a local source of healthy organic food mm -hmm. is critical. Our, our grocery stores can what stock maybe three days worth? Well, and how much do we eat seasonally anymore? This has been mm -hmm. my learning curve. I'm used to going to the grocery store and picking up strawberries in February. Right. Mm -hmm. Well, actually, round. we don't grow strawberries in February. No. Right. So how do I start to adjust to living uh, closer to my roots mm -hmm. and uh, start to conceptualize that life of simplicity, which is what is it that is in my realm, which is accessible, and does not have me in, in exacting a huge uh, carbon impact right. on the world. And there are little things. We talked about the fact that we don't have to do huge things to make a difference. Mm -hmm. um, and so I think that's what you guys are living right now. I think so. Oh, uh, climatemarch.org, if people want to mm -hmm. become virtual marchers, follow us online read our stories, mm. see the pictures, watch the videos. Do you also have a website for oh, Scattergood? Oh yes, of course. So we're www.scattergood.org and uh, uh, Scattergood is an old name. Uh, it just happened to be that that's also probably our mission, to go out and scatter good in the world. <laughs> hey, invite the viewers to the event tonight. So too. tonight, and I don't know if this is going to be published um, before the, the event, but 7.30 tonight on the 21st of August, we actually have an amazing dance event, which is called Monarch Moves. And 
We were just talking about why are we thinking about monarchs right now. Well, Rachel Carson and Silent Spring was talking about why we can't hear the birds. And right now we have questions about where are the butterflies? What's happening to the bees and why should we care? And um, this event tonight is an artistic kind of exploration of these ideas. But more importantly, it brings up to mind to me or to my children or to us right here, we can even talk about, wait a second, when's the last time we saw a plethora of monarchs? Hey, did you read Barbara Kingsolver's book? Yes. Her most recent one? She was a Tucson resident yeah. for a mm -hmm. long time. And her book... Um, I didn't read her most recent. It's, yeah. it's all about the change in the monarch's behavior and what it portends for the future. Mm -hmm. But it's really a good read. So you have, um, you have a nomadic community, you're on the road. Mm -hmm. You talk a little bit more about the day-to-day, -day, and you have a sedentary community, which right. is... Uh, both sustainable and yes. has a lot of stability. And um, so what I like, we have hmm. this time here, you talk about your community and the kids here. Yeah. And the vision, um, what we might call the seventh generation um, yet to come, which is uh, hmm. asking ourselves, whatever choice we make, how does this impact the seventh generation yet to come? Not me, hmm. I, me, and my, my ego, me, my kids, right. my grandkids, all ego. No. Beyond that, mm -hmm. the seventh generation, we can't see and we do not know, which impacts everyone. That choice question. Mm -hmm. So if you would, um, and also your vision. Yeah, interesting. Okay, yeah. if you feel. Oh, my vision <clears throat> is voluntary simplicity, powering down, relocalizing, mm -hmm. and reconnecting. I, I mm -hmm, think that mm -hmm. if we would all take that to heart, mm -hmm. um, overnight we could transition our society mm. into one that is more sustainable more and more enjoyable, honestly. Healthier, yeah. happier, and more sustainable. There is nationwide a group of um, quickly radicalizing educators who are thinking, um, uh, one, what is education for? Uh, what skills and what resources do our students need down the road? Because we're talking about you know, my 10-year-olds who are going to be entering the job market, let's say 10 years, 15 years, what are they going to need? And we know how quickly things are changing. So um, one of the things that we do, we can predict are skills like problem solving, creativity, um, collaborative working, mm -hmm. communicating with human beings as well as technology, um, resiliency, flexible thinking. Um, and possibly risking failure over and over again so yeah. you learn how to get up and try it again because we know that the, the hugest ideas and the biggest inventions do not come from that first moment of success or that um, great SAT score that you got. <laughs> the bubble that you filled out. Yeah. Um, we know that actually the teachers of this world don't know as much as the kids' smartphone. Hmm. So what's the teacher's role in all of this is to stimulate and to encourage and to provide a platform where every person who comes knows that they have a place and they have a gift, they have mm -hmm. something to offer. Amen. Mm -hmm. So this is like the, the, the biggest piece of Scattergood right now. We've kind of thrown out the window some ideas um, mm -hmm. that are being slammed down a lot of different educator throats right now, which mm -hmm. I'll just call core standards. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. There's, We got to get back to a uh, personalized and relevant education because all of us have something to offer. And so that's, I think, that piece where um, I love the fact that Scattergood's able to welcome a group of people mm -hmm. who come from so many different places and are all finding their own inner strength and resources to pass on a message that's much greater than any of us. Mm -hmm. and, and, and people can join the Climate March, too. They can join yeah, up for an hour, they can join up for a day, a week, mm. they can go the rest of the way till D.C. It started in Los Angeles. That's fat. just so amazing. Go ahead, just yeah. fly with it. Yeah, <laughs> Los Angeles, March 1st. Our group set off in a torrential downpour. 
They had water up to their knees. Mm. They walked through the Mojave Desert. Bad. Wow. We had simultaneous <laughs> sunburns and frostbite. Oh my gosh. <laughs> we've, we've endured ticks and mosquitoes and bugs and... You have a three-year-old and an 83-year-old on the march yes. right now. Yes, and a dog. Ooh. And your dog. And a dog. <laughs> but it's, so that means that it's really possible. We're, like any number of people could yes. be involved. We are yeah. a group of ordinary people doing extraordinary, extraordinary mm -hmm. things. We've mm -hmm. got teachers and educators mm -hmm. and students and um, physical therapists yeah. and just a broad range mm -hmm. of... And everyone has a different part of the wheel, don't they? Yes. Everyone's a facet. Someone might do the headaches one day, somebody does the cooking, oh. but everybody changes. Here I am. I ran for mayor. I am all but dissertation in mm -hmm. two PhDs. Yeah, you got two PhDs. I'm a scullery maid. Sure. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I'm happy mm -hmm. doing mm -hmm. yeah. all of the background mm -hmm. and, and, preparatory And people work. come and you have insights and people will shine something onto you. Yeah. Um, every moment is a different facet on that, or fractal, or of that mm -hmm. moving wheel down the road, you know what I mean? Well, what a great exercise in examining the place that our ego plays mm -hmm. in the world. Um, so at Scattergood, the same sort of thing, where I'm a lunch helper this year for twice a week. Last year, I cooked breakfast three times a wow. week. Um, this there's idea that in there's integrity. dignity in work, any work that you that, do, it, yes. yeah. that there, there is meaning and you can find joy and you can bring purpose to whatever you do in this life. And it does not have to have a ton of numbers coming behind to show that you're worthwhile yeah. as a human being. Mm -hmm. And it's very satisfying. It's very mm -hmm. enjoyable to be part of it. So, Mary, did, do you have some little things along the way that are real humorous, yeah. the little moments of a long <laughs> you know, experience or well, mountain uh, or? Yes, there's so many, so many things. Um, um, in the Laguna Pueblo in New Mexico, we had a 91-year-old marching with us. He was living in the back of his pickup truck. Wow. Yeah. And we also had these big burly uh, security uh, police officers who mm. were escorting us through the Pueblo. Oh. And he sees them over there all outfitted and looking, you know, authoritative. Yeah. And he comes shuffling over and he says, officer, officer, arrest that dog. It's a kleptomaniac and it's stolen all my money. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> so that was the funniest that is moment funny. for me. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but we've stayed in detention center. We've stayed in cornfields. Mm. Wow. Stopped at the side of the road, public parks, national mm -hmm. forests. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. Places like Scattergood. Mm -hmm. So you come up out of the Mojave and you survived that. Now did you go into Las Vegas into Utah? How did you go? Well, I joined on in Phoenix, okay. Arizona, because mm. so, that was the closest right, right. Um, to my home in Tucson. Right. Okay. And we came up over the Continental Divide. Wow. wow. How was that, Mary? Oh, so breathtaking. We've got such beautiful oh, my climbing gosh. all that way up there. Mm -hmm. mm. Yep, shin splints mm. and <laughs> mm -hmm. blisters mm. and um, mm. feet problems. Yeah. And, but, you know, all those things get worked out and solved, and along we go. And you guys brought an eco commode to scatter good. I want to do this. Yeah. And without chemicals. Amazing. It is. You think about the amount of fresh water that we flush down our toilets. Mm -hmm. Right. And if we're looking for radical in, um, ways to change, we could go back to eco commodes, the outhouses mm -hmm. of our forefathers, mm -hmm. yeah, and bury yeah. our poop, right. turn it into compost. Uh, and you brought something else. I, I know there was something else. There was some other our solar panel. Solar, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. We use that to generate uh, the energy needed for our refrigerator. It powers our phones and our computers right. and our coffee maker in the morning. You gotta be kidding! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it does. It's a great outfit. It does. The food that has come out of the back of a U-Haul truck, where we've got our camp stoves yeah. and our donated produce and our um, utensils, mm -hmm. it's amazing. Um, so like, you, you met a lot of folks along the way and people, you stayed at homes and people mm -hmm. came out and met you and you, they brought food and shared and so forth. A little bit about that, we have a, about yeah. five minutes here. Oh, we've had 
tremendous mm -hmm. reception from mm -hmm. multiple communities across the way. They feed us, they shelter us, they um, mm -hmm. entertain us. Mm -hmm as is going to happen at Scatter Good tonight. So you're saying there's, mm. you've experienced a lot of, what's well, the moment of hope here, goodwill in, in the spirit of the people, very wherever much, you go. Very you know, much, Very hospitable yes. um, sharings and so forth. So we would like to um, say that this is a vision of hope and inspiration and mm. not just some airy fairy thing, but real deal, feet Absolutely. on the ground. Absolutely, yeah. it can you be know, done. Yeah. So you can share. I was gonna say that the, the gift that the climate marchers give to the communities communities that you roll through is inestimable because um, you're allowing us to gather and to tell our stories, to focus on our own community. So even when you leave, the conversations continue. You may only come in yes. through Iowa City and Coralville and now West Branch for three days. When you leave, you have um, allowed many people to come to the table who might not otherwise have come to the table. And to meet each other. And to meet to each other. To make those connections. Yeah. We're, we're urging every community to out, get people. involved with Citizens Climate Lobby. Hmm. Um, seeding yeah. groups as we go along the way. That's a lasting benefit. Absolutely. It's time to come on out, people. You don't have to live alone no more. We're here That's and right. we're going to come on out. That's um, right. Uh, so, like, whatever you want to share. We're, With right. Scattergood? Or, right. or um, well, yeah, Scattergood. So, what how does Scattergood do scatter well there? across Iowa to a new education well, paradigm? Well, our piece, our piece is just simply we have to we have to strive towards continual reflection and contemplation about who we are, what we are, and how are we doing, and what are we going to do for when we leave Scattergood. This is a, these are 14 to 18 year olds, and we want to inspire students to go out to the world to know how to raise their voices. Con confront injustices and be proactive in creating a, a uh, future for not just themselves but for all of us. So there's a huge piece of empathy and social justice that is being connected that schools all over the country want to try to actively teach, but it doesn't come out of one lesson. It comes out of a way of life. It does. So that's what we do for four years um, at Scattergood. I, I would just say that we, we have to connect. All of us have to get out of mm -hmm. our comfort zone and connect with our neighbors so that we can really see how we're going to go forth. And Mary, um, I would personally just like to thank you um, yeah. for coming in uh, for that long, amazing freaking God blessing you <laughs> I know. You've given. And amazing. you see, look at your Delight. inspiration, how you, you're, uh, look, and so any vision you want to just traject out there for all the people who are watching? Challenge the existing paradigm. Um, adopt mm. new ways of living. Again, power down, consume less, uh, grow more, relocalize. Mm. Um, and so I want to thank two beautiful people here from Scattergood and thank from you. Climate and March. Climate or? March, but from our Tucson woman. And uh, may we walk in beauty. Um, thank I thank you, you so much thank for this you. time you came and thank you shared so with much. us. Thank Thanks. you. We're good.